In this unit, we're going to start taking a look at two more types of structures within MATLAB, one of which is a loop, and we're going to take a look at two different loops, a for loop and a while loop. And the second of these types of um, structures is going to be a function, which is essentially going to be a subroutine that performs a specific task. Um, if you've ever worked in computer science before, um, what you'll notice is that a loop is essentially a programming structure that's going to do the exact same thing until some sort of condition is met. And it could either be like an error, or it could be something that the user suggests to be the terminal sort of condition, um, whatever it might be. There's a lot of different types of ways to end a loop. The first type of loop we're going to be looking at is probably the most simplistic type, uh, at least syntactically. It's a for loop. And a for loop essentially is going to perform some sort of algorithm a set number of times. And it's going to be based on some sort of incremental or decremental sequence defined as a variable. Um, a couple examples of when you might wish to use a loop. If the user enters m by n, you can create a multiplication table. Um, and that would just perform the algorithm m times n times. If you wanted to compute compounded interest over t years, you would have to use a compounded interest formula t times to be able to compute that. Or if you wanted to search an array, if the array was size n, you would just have to search through n elements to find how many instances of zero might occur. So you would just keep the searching and searching until you find go through all the elements in the array until you get all of them. So it would just make, make it execute n times. In MATLAB, there's two different ways to perform a for loop. Um, the main one is just saying that if you have a variable, which we usually call like a counter, like i or j or something like that, the format is there's the initial value, how much that value is incrementing each time, and then the terminal value. And then these are just the, this is the algorithm that you're running it through. So for example, if you wanted to print all the odd numbers between one and 100, you would say for i equals one, and then two means that you're going to increment by two each time. So you start at one, plus two is three, plus two more is five, plus two more is seven. And you're going to do that until you get to 100. You're not going to reach 100 because 100 is not an odd number, but you're going to terminate once the counter hits 100. And then you're just going to print out the value of odd, and that's going to print out all the odd numbers. If you only want to increment by one, MATLAB defaults that, and you don't need that second parameter. So see how we have two here? Right here, this just goes from 0 to 49 in increments of 1. And you're going to print out every odd number, which is 2i plus 1 is the definition of an odd number. So it's going to be 2 times 0 plus 1, 2 times 1 plus 1, 2 times 2 plus 1, etc. It's going to print all those out. So we're going to take a look at two really basic examples of how we're going to go ahead and utilize a for loop. So let's just write a really basic sort of program that the user enters n, and it's going to print out, the code will print out the first n perfect squares and the first, first n perfect cubes to a text file. And that text file is going to mean powers.x. All right, so first things first, let's get n from the user. And we're going to say, enter an integer. We're not going to do any error checking or anything like that. We're just going to assume that the user will enter an integer. And we're going to say file ID, because we're just going to give the name of file. Let's call that powers.txt. And in fact, we're going to say f open, because we wanted to open that. So powers.txt. And we're going to give it writing privileges. So we're going to say w on that. All right. Now we're going to go through, and we're going to print the first n perfect squares. So we're going to say f print f, and we're going to write out the file ID. And this is just more of like a labeling. So we're going to say the first percent d perfect squares are, and we're going to say that's going to be n. So it's basically saying that we're printing out the first n perfect square, so the first 20 or the first 30, whatever it is. But we're not actually printing them yet. We're going to do a for loop for that. So we're going to say for i equals 1 colon n. Right? So remember, you could type it as, and this should be an i, 
So i equals one colon one colon n, but we're just going to do one to n, all right? Just because we only wanted to do it in increments of one, we are going to f print f file ID. So we're printing out to a file, and we're just going to say percent d, and we're going to print i squared, all right? So it takes one through n, and it prints out the square of that number right here. Now there's no enter yet. All right, so it's all in one line. We're going to end this. All right. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to f print f. I'm going to print out two returns. All right, so that way we can go to the next, and I'm going to print that out to file ID. All right. Now let's execute this. And notice over here in the current folder, there's no powers.txt. So I'm going to run this. Um, I'm going to suppress this just so we don't get like any Boolean messages or anything like that. So let's just do 20. All right, and here's our powers.txt. I'm going to open this outside of MATLAB, and here are our first 20 perfect squares. So really nice that it did that um, perfectly for us. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm just going to copy and paste this, and I'm just going to change everything to cubes. Okay, so notice that i is being redefined from 1 to n. All right, so if you wanted to use a different variable, you can, but you don't have to. I'm going to change this to cube, and then I'm going to do an F close. I should have done this the first time. They had programming practice, because if I wanted to delete it, like notice if I try to delete this, it might not let me, all right, because it's open. I never closed it, so I'm going to have to run it again, which is why you always want to terminate with a F close state. So let me go ahead and run this again. Um, I got a zero because... I guess that's the number of times that fclose was executed, but um, let's go ahead and open this. All right, and now we have our squares and our cubes. All right, so pretty cool that that happened. I'm going to delete this. And I'm just going to run it one more time just to illustrate that I didn't pull like any magic. Let me do 30 this time. All right, so no software editing to make it look better than what it really is. All right, and then here's all of our perfect squares and cubes. All right, so pretty cool. Now, a second example of using a for loop. This time, let's read code in from a temperature file, an Excel file this time, called temps XLS. And it's just a list of temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to write a code to determine how many observations are higher than 75 and how many observations are lower than or equal to 75. And then we're going to print this information back into the Excel file but this time in sheet two. All right. So first things first, we have to get the temp, we have to get our temperature file into Excel. So I'm going to delete this because we don't need it anymore. And remember, all you have to do is just go to where your file is. So, and then you just drag it over here and it'll, it'll show up immediately. I'm going to copy this back over here. All right, because I think I dragged it. I'm going to copy this and see if I can get it back into my folder so I don't lose it forever. There we go. All right. And let's delete all this. And first thing we have to do is we have to actually open the temp file. All right. So um, first of all, let me call file name. I could use file ID, but I'm just going to use file name this time. File name is going to be equal to temps.xls. And I'm going to assign A to be all of the information within that file. So remember, we could use XLS read. And I'm going to say file name. All right, now, everything's stored inside variable A. All right, but if I run this, and it might take a second for it to actually run, notice it's a column vector. All right, so remember that trick that we use is we use the transpose. So we say A equals A prime. All right, so creates a row vector rather than a column vector. All right, so whenever you use XLS read, it just defaults as a column vector, all right? Um, now we need some variables, all right? First of all, we have to create some dead variables or just some default variables. So I'm gonna say above 75 is gonna be equal to zero. So right now there are no, we haven't like, gone through an algorithm. So there's no instances of anything above 75. And I'm going to say below or equal 75. 
right? So if you look at the program or the requirements, it says lower than or equal to 75 degrees or one that's higher than. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. The other thing we need to know is how big is A or and how many elements are in the array. So you might remember, and I'm just going to call this size or count or something like that. Count, I can't use size because that's the command. So I'm going to say count equals size. And I'm going to say size of A. And two is going to tell me how many columns there are. All right, so um, let me execute this just to show you what happens. All right, so now we have a row vector and notice that the count is 29. So we have 29 elements inside of A. All right, so we need to know that because if we don't know that, then we don't know how many times to run the algorithm and we can't build our for loop. Now we can build the for loop. So for I is going to be equal to one colon count, whatever count is. If A sub I, all right, so this is going to run through every element in A. So remember, this is I is one, two, three, four, five. So if A sub I is greater than 75, we're going to say A 75 is going to go up by one. So that's going to equal A 75 plus one. So whatever was stored in A 75, it just increases A 75 by one if the condition is met. Now we're going to say else if, we could really just do else, but we're going to say if a sub i is less than or equal to 75, then we're going to say be 75 equals be 75 plus one. Same thing, all right? We're going to increment b 75 by one if for some reason it meets that condition, all right? So that's end, and then we're going to do another end. So this is our algorithm for the for loop. It's just going through and it's checking the conditions. All right. Um, now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to write this out to the same Excel file, attempts s. All right. So um, let's first of all build a header. So I'm going to say header equals. Remember, you have to do the header as a set. And I'm going to say above 75, not above or er, above 75. Right. And then below or equal 75. Right. Now I'm going to XLS write and I'm going to write to file name and I'm going to write header. I'm going to write it in sheet two. Right. And then I'm going to write it in cell A1 and A2. So it's just going to start there and it's going to write it across. Okay. I'm going to do the exact same thing, except now I'm going to write A75 and I'm going to write that in A2. And then finally, the last thing I want to write is BE75 and I'm going to write that in column or in cell B2. Okay. And then I'm going to do an F close all So that way I can just close everything on the side. All right. So um, before we do this, let me go ahead and open this just so that way you can see what the file looks like before we actually write to it. Okay. Because notice we've only read from the file. So again, I want to make sure that I'm not performing any hocus pocus. So here we go. All right. And notice that there's no sheet two. Right. So now I'm going to run this, hopefully. Suppress. Let me suppress some of this stuff. I'm going to run it. All right. Now it gives us a warning. It added a worksheet. So that's good. Usually when we get a warning, it's not good. And I'm going to go ahead and open this now. And we're going to open outside MATLAB. Hopefully. All right. And sheet one is untouched, but now there is a sheet two. I know I just switched back really quickly. All right, but that's good that it actually wrote a sheet two. And notice it has the number of temperatures that were above 75 and the number of temperatures that were below 75. All right, so you could see where this might be useful is because we could create a whole frequency distribution if we really wanted to. All right, but 
um, but it helps us to write things out to Excel, which is probably one of the most useful things we can do because Excel can do things pretty quickly. Right? So that's all we were looking at for for loops for now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at while loops in our next video.